What's up everybody, Joe Everest, The Fence Expert. Welcome to another update to the video reaction series. Before we get into this week's video, remember, if you find the video helpful or educational, entertaining at all, it would mean the world to us if you gave it a like. Also, if you're new here, consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that bell so that YouTube will let you know each and every week as we have new content ready for you. All right, with that being said, let's dig into it. So this video is titled, How to Build a Fence Gate Perfect Mount Trick. Everyone's, uh, you know, gates are nationwide, gates are the number one callback on fences. So let's see, before we even start, so it's a wood frame gate. If you guys have watched the channel, you know my feelings on wood frame gates. I, it doesn't matter how, how perfectly you build that gate, wood as a product, as a, it's a natural product, it's going to warp and twist. You could, you could build this thing perfectly, put so much support and bracing into it. The wood's always going to find a way to warp. But anyway, let's let's dig into it. Let's see see what this guy does with his gate. Today, a video about how I custom made this gate for this fence piece by piece, and a little special tip that I did to help me put this up by myself that I think you enjoy. Stick around. All right. So if he's got a if he's got a tip for hanging a gate with one person, that's going to be really interesting. Um, typically, gate building's a two-person job for some parts of it. Uh, we'll see. So today I'm gonna build a gate, and I put these posts in yesterday to make the gate opening. And this gate is going to swing this way in, and I'm gonna show you how I got it done. So one of the most important things was getting this post in just right. And you can see I beat it up. This is two four by four pressure treated post, and it is concreted with a lot of concrete in the ground. This is couple of thoughts here. One, so the posts are concreted. That's obviously a great first step. He said he had set those posts yesterday. Um, I'm not, I'm not completely sure. Typically, you want to let concrete wait at least two days unless you used rapid set he could have very well used rapid set quick uh, but typically if you're using standard concrete you want to give it at least a couple days at least 48 hours to cure up now he's bolted two four before posts together i absolutely like this idea uh all too often we see sagging gates because the hinge post is undersized so essentially he has a four by eight post by bolting two of those together um, definitely gives him a lot of strength and, and stability Usually I see gate posts, the hinge posts be a six by six wood post. Um, I'm not sure, four by eight, maybe gives a little bit more strength. It's nice and plump. So this is gonna be where our hinges, this is gonna take all the force, the leverage from the gate itself. So this has to be stout, this has to be beefy, it just has to not move. So the two four by fours and a bunch of concrete should do the trick, plus it's tight. So the reason we use steel posts to, to his point is, it's gotta be sturdy, it's gotta be straight, it can't move. Even even two posts bolted together, while absolutely better than than one post, a single four by four, those posts at some point are going to move. So if they're bolted together, there's still nothing really. I mean, obviously it's attached to a fence. It looks like a short section to another post. So it's probably got a little little bit of strength there. But man, I'd, you'd have to think over time those posts are still going to warp and twist. The gate's probably still going to come out of alignment, but we'll see in to the rest of the fence. So I think we'll be good here. So to figure out my frame size, first thing I'm gonna do is measure my opening. And I'm about 56 and a half. I like that he's doing a little bit wider gate. So a lot of times the standard single gate size is 48 inches. Um, but what we're seeing is we're going out and replacing a lot of gates that were that were built previously uh, with a 48 inch opening for with a four foot opening for something a little bit wider. Typically right now about a 60 inch opening for bigger bigger lawn equipment. So I like that he's starting off with a wider gate. Half my fence height will be somewhere around six feet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the frame about five feet tall and about an inch shorter than this width here. So I'm gonna start making the frame. So the width is the more critical dimension here. So I'm gonna measure the width of the frame first. And I'm gonna do it. So typically when you see you guys, when you see you guys build wood frame gates, typically they'll attach they'll attach their horizontal runners to the post so that they know everything's exactly right. So they would attach it to the post, they would build it out, they'd put the hardware on it. And then they would cut. So he mentioned leaving a one inch gap on either side. I think that's a great idea. It leaves room for expansion, you know, as as the wood expands and contracts, it gives it that room. So I like that a lot. What a lot of guys will do is they'll go ahead and bolt up they'll, or nail up the cross members in that gate opening so that they know everything's just exactly right, exactly the right width, rather than if you build a gate, you know, what this gentleman is doing on off site or outside of the gate frame, um, give, it's, it's a big opportunity for that gate frame not to fit just exactly right. The, the reason being, let me just explain a little bit more. So he took one measurement right at the right at the middle 
the problem is, you know, if those if those posts aren't perfectly plumb. So if the measurement at the very tip top isn't the same as the measurement measurement at the bottom, isn't the same as the measurement in the middle, a lot of times those three measurements are going to be a little bit different. I mean, even if the per, the posts are perfectly plumb in your level, if one's a fraction of a bubble off at the base, that's going to leave your top with a little bit wider gap than your bottom. Um, again, building your gate on the on the building your gate frame on the gate opening itself kind of takes that possibility out of it. About an inch shy of the actual width of the opening. So in my case, that's going to be 55 and a half. So I got to cut two pieces at 55 and a half, and then I got to cut my height piece as well, which I'm going to do somewhere around five feet, but that's not real critical at all. And that five foot measurement's right. Typically, we want to leave six inches below the bottom the bottom runner, and six inches above the top runner. It's pretty good. Pretty good measurement. Sometimes you see guys leave a little bit more space than that from the top and the bottom, which only invites the opportunity for those pickets to warp. So off to a great start. Watch it. So now I'm going to cut the height pieces, two of these. I'm just cutting mine in this case around five feet. Of course, I need two pieces here. So what I'm going to do with my width pieces of frame is I'm going to come down a half the width of the board, make a mark, make a mark. So we're going to cut like this, make a line like this, and then the width of the 2 by 4 And then I'm going to cut that notch out, and then that will give us a little bit of a joint. I understand what he's doing by cutting by cutting a notch and joining those together. It's, it's giving it, he's trying to give it a little bit more strength and support. If I'm going to, if I'm going to cut a joint into the board, I think, one guy's opinion, right? So I think this is going to lead to a weaker frame only because you're notching half, half of that, half the other board out of it. You're giving it less support. And I'm sure he's he's going to he's going to screw it together. Probably use some probably use wood glue on it. I'm sure. If I were going to cut it, you know, if you're dead set on building a wood frame, you're going to cut it. I would actually cut those two at 45s and then join them together that way, uh, rather than notch one. I think that would probably be a stronger joint. You know, if you guys if you guys are experienced in woodworking, why don't you leave a comment below on whether you would join it this way or at 45s, or there's probably a different way. If you would join this differently, that would be a stronger joint. Uh, why don't you help us all out and leave a comment below and let me know. Which will um, help quite a bit with strength. So I'm going to do that for both uh, joints on the top side and then again on the bottom side as well. So we'll cut these out the bottom, this out of the top. The joints slide in like that, and then I'll put two screws in here, and then I'll probably put some glue in there as well. So attach my joints, use some glue. Which just uh, always happens. If you're if you're working with wood, that tip always gums up. I don't care how clean you keep it, that tip's always going to gum up. You end up taking the top off and just like you did, spread it out with the nozzle, or with the mouth of the glue. Slide that in there like that, just to help start get a square fitting. Let's use a speed square here. Okay. Which that's a great tip. So if you're building anything square, measure diagonally from from either side. Those two measurements should be exactly the same. It'll let you know if everything's square and true. do is run a brace from this corner to that corner and it's important that this be the inside of the gate and that be the outside of the gate and then what happens is as you get leverage on the gate it's going to push down that brace. yeah that's pretty common so the way i usually explain it if you're building a wood gate and you need to brace it from the bottom of the hinge side to the top of the latch side you want your brace to go diagonally in that direction so that as weight is exerted or gravity is exerted on the outside edge of that gate that the brace absorbs some of that and gives it structure gives it support back to that bottom uh, that bottom hinge push back on this hinge so i'm gonna run it this way i'm gonna make some angle cuts so easy way to do that now time to cut them i like that he's glowing this too instead of just using screws you don't see that a lot with fence guys but in woodworking, obviously, it's incredibly common. You always want to glue your joints uh, when you're using screws if you're joining two pieces of wood like this. 
after I glued this joint, I want a toenail into it, but I want to keep it clean, so I'm going to pre-drill my toenail. I think I'll just one this way and then one this way and this way. I know we shouldn't drill through that. This makes me incredibly nervous that, and realistically, the drill bit's probably not long enough to go through. But man, putting your hand there when you're drilling through it seems like an opportunity for, for an injury there. All right. This step is where I'm taking a not so traditional approach. And what I did is I tacked up these uh, scrap pieces of board here, and I'm actually going to temporarily screw my door frame off to this. And I just think it's a little easier way to get it in place, and then I can go ahead and deck it out, get the hinges on, and then when I'm done, I just take the braces off. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, now that I got two screws on from the other side, I'm actually going to tack it off on this side, so I can go ahead and put my fence pickets on the other side. So he's, he's putting a lot of holes in the gate. I would be curious to see if he's going to fill them when he's done. That's probably that's probably some feedback we would get from from customers is why are there holes in my gate? You know, because obviously he's going to back those out eventually, and when he's when it's hung, I'm interested to see if he fills those or not. Now it's in place. So my goal when I was building this, I really wanted to keep the gate as light as possible. I was going to try to eliminate putting a piece in here, but I said I want to go ahead and use three hinges, and I want to have some more backing for my pickets. It's going to make the gate heavier, but I hope with the extra hinge, it's going to be okay. So I'm just going to run. So agree and disagree on this. I like that he's putting a middle rail in. Um, on a wood frame gate, it's it's good to get as much bracing in as possible, and it gives your pickets some support. I wouldn't put three hinges on it. We don't, only because that middle hinge has a really good opportunity to put the other two hinges in a bind. If all three if all three hinges aren't installed perfectly in alignment and they never come out of alignment, it would probably be okay. But realistically, at some point, those hinges are going to come out of alignment and put each other in a bind. Uh, I would recommend using heavier grade hardware to where we'd only use two, you know, a top and a bottom hinge on it. Some cut pieces I made to go directly across the one here, one here, and I will tow it. It would also probably drive me crazy as a customer if my middle rail on the gate didn't match my middle rail on the fence. Uh, that might be my OCD probably, but that would probably drive me crazy. Now I'm in. One of the problems with doing the fence this way is you block yourself off. So that's fine. Before I go ahead and put the pickets on, I need to make sure to remove the screws I have on this side. So now I'm going to go ahead and tack up my pickets, and I'm just going to use galvanized hot dip two-inch nails, and I'm going to kind of arbitrarily pick a height, and I'm going to go ahead and put one picket. You don't arbitrarily pick a height. So what our process would be is both sides of this fence would already, or of this gate would already have their pickets installed, or where it matches the rest of the fence, and then either a string line or a top jig, whatever you would use, will be placed atop those two pickets so that your gate pickets match uh, that height exactly. He also said he's using a using a two inch nail, which you, you'd want to use an inch and a half nail so that those two by fours are actually only inch and a half thick. The pickets probably a half inch. So two inch is gonna give you, if you countersink that nail at all, it's gonna give you the real possibility of having sharp edges stick out on the other side of that gate. Um, I would probably use an inch and a half inch or one and a half inch finish nail. On each end first, I do about a two by four space between each one and then kind of figure out the space in the middle as I go. Then I'll ultimately put two nails in each horizontal beam. I'm just going to tack up them for now. And I'm going to do that side. Okay, and just for precision, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a line from this one to this one. And then that will keep all. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. But you would actually have your picket, your last picket on the fence, you just run a string line from it to your other fence picket so that your gate your gate height matches your fence. Exactly. All my pickets the same height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave about an inch and a half space between the pickets. I'm gonna use a two by four. I'm gonna put my two by four here, put this next one up to the line. And I'm gonna work my way to the center for my spacing. So, so part of me wonders if he's building maybe a shadow box fence uh, with a board on either side. So he, he said he has an inch and a half gap on his gate, and maybe it's an optical illusion, but if you look to the side, to the right side of the gate, 
that gap seems a lot more than an inch and a half. It almost looks like the wide side of that two by four, you know, like about three and a half maybe. So like I said, maybe it's an optical illusion. All right, for the last two, um, if I put a two by four on each side, they're gonna be like that. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball the spacing to get them about where they need to be, tack them off, and we come back and add the nails to the remaining to get them all nice secure, then it's on the You don't wanna eyeball anything. The only reason is, your eyeballs are going to be different than your neighbor's eyeballs is going to be different. If you're building this fence for somebody, it's going to be different than the customer's eyeballs. It, you eyeballing it and saying it's right doesn't necessarily mean it's right. I would absolutely measure that to make sure the, the spacing is exact or as exact as possible. Eyeballing it really leaves a lot of gray area open for interpretation. I'm sorry. So now I'm back on the back side of the gate, and it's time to go ahead and put my hinges on. This is the hinge here. We're going to put it on the post, and then obviously this beam here. I keep it level two. That looks good. I'm going to pre-drill this first screw here. Let's start that one. Screw down. These are nice, heavy-duty stainless hinges. The screws aren't real big, but there's a bunch of them. And since we're going straight to the post, I think we're okay. Keep it nice and level. Now I can drill my second. I understand the idea of using a lot of something, so smaller, you know, a lot of screws, so don't use bigger screws. I am always a fan of using the biggest screw possible as long as possible to give you as much purchase into that gate as as possible. Um, I yeah, using screws that you can just hand screw into the gate. I don't know that that's a great long term solution. Get screw, and then from there, I'm gonna put a screw in here, and then I'm gonna put a screw in every one of these holes. My pre drill screw, and I'm gonna do that for the other two hinges as well. Okay, now I can tighten these down, and I got a bunch more screws to do. So I'm going to put two more hinges. I'm going to put one here in the middle, one here at the bottom. I'm going to do the bottom one first, and then the middle one last. And then these hinges are stainless as well. They're heavy duty, but they're not quite as big as that one. I figured go ahead and get a real big one for the top, and then these are still pretty beefy. You always want your hinges to match. Do not mix and match sizes of hinges, only because typically the hinges, and they're usually sold in pairs anyway, but they're made, they're made to align with each other. Uh, when you mix and match, uh, there's a huge opportunity for disaster long term. But uh, they're just not quite as big, so putting them down there. That top one should have the most force on it. Put these smaller ones. These other spots on should be good. And your bottom hinge is, is going to have just as much force on it, right? So because it's it has the burden of having the rail, having the support rail, so it's taking all of that force from gravity, pulling that gate down, trying to pull it down. I You want big, beefy hinges on both the top and the bottom. Okay, all three hinges are attached. Now to take off. The board's holding it up and see what happens. Okay, so the only thing left holding this gate, well, hopefully now the hinges are, the only thing left holding it prior to the hinges is my scrap board here. I already took the bottom one off. I'm stir on that screw, take this screw out, and hope it doesn't drop big time. We'll see. All right, the moment of truth. I'm gonna take this screw out and hope the gate doesn't sag. Well, it's out. Doesn't look like it's sagged. Let's open it up, see if it does. Whew. There it is. Perfect. Works great. Pretty impressed with how it all turned out. The, using those temporary braces seem to be the way to go. Made for. And that probably is a good tip. You know, if you're swinging the gate in, I think that I think that board tip is absolutely a great one. Um, I didn't see him fill the holes though. Let's see if he does that. Perfect defense. So very happy about it. Next thing I need to do is put the latches on, and this is a done deal. If you found this video helpful, please. All right. So he didn't fill the holes. I, if you're doing that, definitely fill the holes. I think a customer would probably have something to say with there being additional holes left in there gates. All right, guys, I appreciate you making it all the way to the end of the video. If you found the video helpful or enjoyable, be sure to give it a like. And also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that YouTube sends you a notification each and every week when we have new content uploaded and available for you. But for now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.